Here we go with DM tips for the Palace of Hearts Desire. This is the finale of The Wild Beyond the Witchlight, a fantastic adventure. I cannot recommend it highly enough. If you are a player, please click away and come back after you've played the adventure. I don't want to ruin any of it for you. And there will be spoilers abounding here in this video. The page references that are in the description below will be to the hardcover. This adventure is written by Stacy Allen, Will Doyle, Ari Levich, Christopher Perkins, and I am sure there are many other contributors to this fantastic adventure. So let's talk about pacing. I would pace this adventure for eight hours. Now, it can quickly go less than eight hours if the party happens to run into just the right information. And so we'll discuss a little bit about tools for pacing. So the first session, hour zero to hour one, exploring the garden. Took a little bit over an hour for our group to get through the garden. Hour one to two, exploring the palace. Hopefully you stay on the lower level, but the group can go really anywhere. Hour two to three, this is where I would put in the first confrontation with Kellick. Now Kellick is normally encountered in the palace in area 31. If we look at the whole map of the palace here, area 31 is here and this tower in the middle of the Court of Storms. Kellick and his retinue are there. You got Kellick and Warduke. He's got three cockatrices. Zargash and Zarak may not be there. Uh, in fact, Zargash is normally over in the Pool of Sludge. And Zarak may not have made it out of the forest up thither. But if he did, you can bring him in here. Then, of course, you got the glasswork golems that could come. Now, Kellick doesn't have to stay here. And in fact, if the party runs to this area, a, this location before the two-hour mark, I'd recommend Kellick not being here, such that he will come here and confront the party or confront the party somewhere else in the palace at about the two-hour mark. Then the next step would be at the hour two to three, Kellick, hour three to four, more exploration of the palace. And at about hour three or on, I would put the discovery of the horn plus the true name uh, method of freeing people. Now, this can be found out with Thinnings in area P15. Now, Thinnings, if they run into him right away, could, you know, they could get this information a little bit too soon. So you could definitely move Thinnings around. You can move between this area P15. You could be in the guest rooms or anywhere else in the palace. Have him, you know, be discovered by the players by the top of hour three. All right, that'd be the end of the first session after the party explores a little bit more. The second session, hour zero to one, more exploration. Now, at some point here, things might start to happen because they might have run into Kellek. They might know the true name and the horn can free people. And Kellek, of course, does not want um, Valor's Call to be freed. So if the party goes to free any of Valor's Call, Kellek could double cross him then. Hour one to two, more exploration. Hour two to three, more exploration. And about this point, I'd say it's okay to discover the information about the flame tongue and the cauldron. And the flame tongue and the cauldron information that's found in area P51 with um, Igwil's Familiar. And of course, Igwil's Familiar can move anywhere in the palace as well. So if they get to area 51 early up before this point, I'd have that Familiar move somewhere else before they get there. They could also discover Zabulin's true name also through the Familiar, or that can also be found in the, not wardrobe area, but the area um, 36 in the palace right over here and that being the costume room. Now, if they get here too soon, you could definitely move that cape to another area they haven't been to. If they haven't been to B26, you could move it there, the cloakroom. If they haven't been into Zabilna's private quarters, they could move it there, either in her bedroom or in her closet as well. All right, and then, coming up to the end of the adventure, the party hopefully has found out about the flame tongue. They've discovered the true name. They're going to try and get Valor's Call released or get rid of the Jabberwock if they haven't done it some other time. So watch for Kellex Double Cross again. And then try to delay the freeing of Zabilna until about hour three. Because once Zabilna is freed, that's basically the end of the adventure. There's the wrap up and the tie ups for the adventure there. Okay, so we talked about tools for pacing. Kellex can move anywhere and Kellex can come to the party. The party doesn't have to come to Kellex. For that matter, any other member of the League of Malevents could be used in the same way to just kind of you know, a red herring to pull the party away from an area you don't want them to be at yet, or to start an encounter, etc. You also have the hags of the Hourglass Coven. When I ran it, the last hag left was Babylorna. 
but you could have Babylonia, Scabatha, Edelin, or any combination thereof in the in the palace, and they can come again to the party. They don't have to stay in Area 47, where they normally start. Speaking of that, there's really no way to get into the central tower, except through this room here, where you open up boxes and say Baba Yaga. So what I'd recommend is to get out of the tower. If anyone says the word Baba Yaga, they immediately teleport back to this room here. That'd give the people like um, oh, War Duke and others who can't fly a way to get out. And Kelly can not fly a whole lot, so he'd definitely want a way to get in and out. So that's that. Now for um, music. I used, inside the palace itself, the Antiquarian Study by Tabletop Audio. I have it playing right now. I'll turn it up a little bit. It's got a neat little tick-tock sound that goes with it. So there's that one. And then in the garden that's outside, I'd recommend using Elven Glade, also by Tabletop Audio. Turn that one up for you. So real nice garden Elven sounds there. All right. Now, things you'll want to know before you start running the adventure. You'll want to know who the Witchlight Monarch is. You'll want to have knowledge if they have the Unicorn Horn yet. If they haven't found it yet, it's going to be one of two places. Either in the library, area 28 here, or it could be with the Familiar again, which again, you can move around in area 51. You want to know if they skillfully rode the giant dragonfly, because if they did, when the cranes drop them off at the front gate, then they have a little boon where they can cast Featherfall once, 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 um, ever, actually. Then you want to know if, um, you happen to be, you want to know if they've examined the mannequin of Tasha in the glass cabinet outside the Hall of Illusions, because that can give them more hints about who's wearing these costumes in the costume room and would help them point to the young one wearing the costume and Natasha. Then, did you kill any of the dretches in the dretch nursery? This will affect the gifts, and you gotta ask that carefully. If you're the second DM running, if you happen to be running it as part of a virtual you know, game day, um, try and find that information out. Did you impress Featherine, the Gundle, the Swan, and the Witchlight Carnival? That'll come into play for the door leading into Zabilna's private quarters. What do you want the most? That'll come into play with a mirror. You know, what's your heart's desire? It'll also come into play after the party has freed Zabilna and what her final gifts are for the party. How did you look when young and how many may you look when you're old? That'll come into play in the jar room. Okay, other knowledge I like to impart to the players of characters they can reveal the knowledge in character during the adventure is... Um, if they have Arcana plus Abyssal, information about the Demon Sludge, and I'll put all this stuff in the description below so you can copy and paste what you like. If they have Arcana plus Abyssal, information about Igwill's fascination with chess, and maybe even, how, maybe even how she's played chess with such notables as Morning Kenan, which that chess set happens to be from. If they have ties to Good Fay or the Slee Court, you could give them some tie with this elf um, messenger who is frozen in the courtroom. So they could re release the elf messenger and find some more information out that way. If they are a bard or a sage and they have knowledge of history, they can know about the League of Malevents from page 219 or about Valor's Call from page 222. If they're a bard or a sage, they have arcana and history. They could know even more detail about how Kellick is looking for the staff that Ringle Run carries. And then, if they have Nature and Fae, they can know about Sabilna from page 170, they can know about Darklings from page 233, and Nature plus Fae, they can know about Eving Berry Wine in page 183, which is in the kitchen area. So that is an overview for the Palace of Heart's Desire. Now, the coolness comes in with the character arcs and how they tie up. So Sabilna can grant the character's you know, greatest desire. So Hopefully early on you found out what that was in the campaign and you can kind of tie up the arc for each character in this adventure. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing that when we ran our adventures. And then Spilna otherwise, she will, when she comes alive, of course, if there was anyone working for the Warlock, they might have ran into Spilna when they were very young and she can kind of give them a nod and a wink that, you know, she knows them. Uh, 
a very cool thing to be young again. If anyone decides, hey, I want to be young again, uh, Zabilna can send them back to the carnival as if they're a little kid going to the Witch Thigh Carnival for the first time and bring the circle a full 180 or 360 or figure eight as it would be for this adventure. And let's see, there's one other really cool thing that I enjoyed sharing with the players. Ah, the map. So don't do this until they know the true name of Natasha. But you can share with them the carnival map and kind of prod them along and maybe give inspiration to the first person who figures out that the, uh, the puzzle here spells Natasha. That was a great little Easter egg in there. I'm sure there's plenty of other Easter eggs they haven't even revealed in the maps. Um, so that is it. That's the Palace of Heart's Desire. I hope you have a fantastic time running this adventure. Please uh, leave any comments below for how it went for your group.